chapter 8, The Oath. Where are you going? Berthold asked nervously as Darkus pulled himself up on the shed roof. You'll see, Darkus said. Virginia, give him a leg up. Berthold scrambled up onto the roof of the shed, squealing when his, when his shoe got stuck on the guttering. This way, Darkus said, running lightly along the wall and pulling himself up. He sat on the top, dangling his legs, and he offered Berthold his hand. He spent the day at school pretending to feel ill. Uncle Max had said he could have a second day off too to make their story more believable. But Darkus had wanted to go back. He was desperate to see Berthold and Virginia. His only worry was being spotted by Pickering and Humphrey on his way to school. So he borrowed Uncle Max's bobble hat and a long scarf from the coat stand in the hall and covered his head and face. He checked the coast was clear before slipping out onto the street and he did his best impression of one of the clones hunching his shoulders and strutting to school. At the end of school, he invited Virginia and Berthold to come back to Uncle Max's, keeping the reasons as mysterious as he could. He was worried that if he told them the truth, they'd laugh at him. Or worse, pity him for making up such a crazy story. He needed them to see for him themselves and then perhaps they'd help him. I can't believe you persuaded me to do this, Berthold grumbled, slowly pulling himself along the roof on his bottom, trying not to look down. Darkus grabbed his arm and hoiked him up onto the wall. He pointed down into the yard next door. Take a look at that! Berthold's mouth dropped open. What is it? Virginia asked, pulling herself up on the other side of Darkus. Holy guacamole! Would you look at that? I call it Furniture Forest, Darkus said grandly. What are you, a poet? Virginia laughed, throwing her legs over the wall. Come on, what are you waiting for? Virginia, Bertold said, that's trespassing. Whoops, said Virginia, smiling at Bertold as she let go of the wall and dropped onto the top of a wardrobe. Follow me, Darkus swung himself so his feet hit the vertical sofa and he slid down the cushions, disappearing into the warren. He waited under the table for Virginia and Berthold, who soon scrambled in and sat with him in a huddle. Oh, I, I'm, I'm not sure this is a good idea, Berthold whispered, looking round nervously. We don't know who lives here. I do, Darker said. Are, are, are they friendly? Berthold asked, hopefully. Not exactly, Darkus changed the subject. Look, I've brought you here because I need your help. Is it to do with your dad? Virginia asked. Darkus, Darkus nodded. I knew it! Some stuff has happened and I don't know what it all means yet but I think my dad's disappearance has something to do with this. He slid the backpack off his back and he pulled out Baxter's jam jar. What is that? Berthold exclaimed, leaning forward. Whoa! Where did you get a rhinoceros beetle from that big? Virginia knelt and grabbed the, dar the jar from Darkus, lifting it to her eye level. He's magnificent! How do you know that? No, what? Virginia tapped the glass lightly with her fingertip. Well, that Baxter
Easter is a rhinoceros beetle, Darkus was very impressed. I know lots of things, Virginia smiled, but I also have three brothers and Sean is big into bugs. He's got two stick insects, a tarantula and a whole shelf of DVDs about insects. He'd suck a bucket full of lemons to get his hands on a beetle this big. Darkus took the jar back from her and unscrewed the lid. I found him the day before yesterday. He tipped the jar gently. Everybody, meet Baxter. He said as the rhinoceros beetle crawled out of the jar and onto his hand. Baxter, this is Berthold and this is Virginia. Does it bite? Berthold asked, transfixed. Don't be an idiot, Virginia shoved him. Rhinoceros beetles eat fruit and tree sap. Well, I don't know, do I? Berthold huffed. He looked at Darkus. I don't understand. What's this beetle got to do with your dad's disappearance? Well, yesterday I went to the museum and I saw the room he disappeared from. No way! Virginia's eyes grew wide. Did you find any clues? The police already did a thorough search. Bartol looked over his glasses at her disapprovingly. Well, actually, yes, I did. Darker stroked his finger along Baxter's thorax. Or rather, Baxter did. The beetle found a clue? Virginia looked sceptical. Darkus described how he'd found Baxter and then he told them about the trip to the museum. I wasn't ill yesterday, Darkus said. Uncle Max made that up. He described the collection room full of beetles, the mystery of the empty drawers, finding his father's glasses and then the arrival of Lucretia Cutter. It turns out the room Dad disappeared from is the Cutter Chilioptera collection room. You saw her? Bertolt asked, amazed. The actual Lucretia Cutter? Darkus nodded. I saw her twice, but I'll get to that bit in a minute. Twice? Bertolt squealed. Who's Lucretia Cutter? Virginia asked. I don't know, Darker shrugged. She's rich. I know that. She's got the most amazing car and she's big into beetles. And Uncle Max thinks she's got something to do with Dad's disappearance. You've never heard of Lucretia Cutter? Bertold asked, astonished. Darkus and Virginia shook their heads. The House of Cutter is one of the biggest fashion branches in the world. Lucretia Cutter is known as mad scientist of fashion, Bertolt said. She's a genius and a powerful businesswoman. They stared blank, blankly back at him. You must have seen the winged scarab logo on handbags and stuff. And he drew a circle in the air with his fingers. you know about fashion? Darkus asked, surprised. My mum reads the magazines, Bertolt blushed. So what has this fashion designer got to do with Beatles? Virginia wondered. Or your dad, for that matter. Well, last season she made a suit of armour from spider silk for the ghost of Joan of Arc. Bertold said. Maybe she wants to make a dress out of beetles. Oh, gruesome! And Virginia pulled a face. A dress made of insects. I can't believe you saw her, Bertold said to Darkus. She's hardly ever seen out, not since her accident. 
She doesn't even attend her own shows. Accident? Oh, she was in a terrible car crash about a year ago. Bertel's high-pitched voice dipped into a dramatic whisper. The paper said she would never walk again. Well, she had sticks when I saw her, Darker said. She moved weirdly, but she can walk. They say she almost died, Bertold added. Yeah, well, you can't always believe the papers, Darkus asked bitterly. Anyway, Uncle Max says she's bad news. Bertold looked dismayed. Why? I'm not sure. I'm guessing she must know Dad, because Uncle Max told me Dad used to be a beetle expert. But listen, there's more. Darkus went on to describe hearing the neighbours arguing, discovering the furniture forest, climbing the tree and finding the mountain of cups full of beetles. Then his bee cat. Bertolt looked nervous as he told of his escape and Lucretia Cutter's visit and seeing the girl get out of the car and drop her card. Darkus left out the bit about her blowing him a kiss. It was too embarrassing and he knew Virginia would tease him. And if you don't believe me, he pulled out a white rectangular card of his pocket and held it out. This is it. Bertold took the card and read it. Novak Cutter, actress, Towering Heights, Regent's Park, London. He looked up. Oh, that's a fancy address. Hang on, Virginia held her hands up. This is getting crazy. You're telling me that Baxter flew in and helped you? like some kind of super beetle and made the other beetles gnaw through the ropes so you could escape. Yes, Darkus frowned. He could tell that Virginia didn't believe him. Look, I need your help. I, I feel like I'm doing a, a dot to dot puzzle, only there's a whole loads of dots with no numbers. And I can't what can't work out how they're connected. Look, I get that a lot's going on, but a beetle with superpowers Virginia pursed her lips, raised her eyebrows. You're kidding me. I I, I know it sounds like I made it up, but this is not a joke. Darkus shook his head. I can't talk to anyone else about it. Uncle Max is a bit weird about Baxter already. And he'd kill me if he knew what happened last night. He might make me give Baxter away. He looked from Virginia to Bertold. I need you to believe me. That's why I brought you here to show you. Show us what? Virginia asked. Baxter. Darkus flew. Darkus held out his hand as far as possible. Baxter, it's time to do your stuff. Fly to my shoulder. The beetle's lectra lifted and his soft wings unfurled, vibrating as he jumped into the air. And he flew the short distance to Darkus's shoulder and landed, turning round and settling into his favourite spot. Bertold and Virginia's faces were a picture of shock. Darker shrugged. How did you do that? Berker squeaked, astonished. I didn't do anything. Do it again, Virginia said, her low voice insistent. No. Get Baxter to do something else. Do something harder. Baxter, Darkus whispered, fly up, do a loop. And he traced his movement in the air. 
and then land on Virginia's hand. He reached over, took her hand, opening it, palm up. Okay, go. Baxter leapt into the air, zooming upside down in a circle before coming to land on Virginia's palm. Oh, no way! She shrieked with delight. Shh! Darker scolded. And you say there are more of those beetles up there? Berto pointed up at the Emporium. They're not all like Baxter, Darker said. But yes, there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of them. Wow, this is amazing, Virginia said, staring down at the rhinoceros beetle on her hand. Now do you believe me? Darkus asked, enjoying himself. You betcha, Virginia looked at him, an excited sparkle in her eyes. She held out her hand in front of Darkus's shoulder so Baxter could clamber back. So will you help me? Virginia nodded. Darkus looked at Berthold. And you? Well, he pushed up his glasses up his nose and he swallowed nervously. Oh, I'll do my best. So what's your plan? Virginia asked. Well, Lucretia Cutter wants the beetles up in that room. And if she gets her hand on them, she is going to kill them. I heard her say so. Baxter's elytra flickered open and then closed. It's okay, Baxter. We're not going to let that happen. He looked at Virginia. I don't know how much you know about beetles. But if any of them are like Baxter, then they're very special. And they should be studied, not killed. Darkus felt himself getting angry. We need to find out more about those beetles. Where did they come from? And why does Lucretia Cutter want them? And most importantly, we need to find out how she knows my dad. And if there's any link between those beetles and what's ha whatever dad was working on. An image of a folder under his uncle's arm flashed into his head. I think it might be something called the Fabra Project. I wish you could hear how crazy you sound right now, Virginia chuckled. This is not funny, Darkus found himself shouting. Shh, Bartold, look aloud. Oh, calm down, I get it. Virginia held her hands up. We're on a beetle preservation mission, fighting against an evil tar tycoon from the fashion industry who may or may not have kidnapped your dad for some reason to do with beetles that we don't know yet. She smiled. I'm in. I was just saying it sounds a bit crazy. She leant back and grinned. But crazy as cool. Bertold reached over and put his hand on Darkus's arm. I'll do everything I can to help you find your dad, Darkus, he said earnestly. Thanks. Darkus felt suddenly deflated. His head had been spinning ever since he'd visited the museum, and now that he finally emptied the contents of it to to Virginia and Berthold. He could hear how strange he sounded. Sorry for shouting. Oh, that's okay. Virginia gently punched him on the arm. I don't really have a plan, he admitted, but I can't let Lucretia go in there and murder all those beetles. Let's make an oath, Virginia held her hand out. An oath? I, Virginia Wallace, sol solemnly do swear to help Darkus Cuttle in his mission to find his father and save the Beatles. 
Bertolt put his hand on top of Virginia's. I, Bertolt Roberts, solemnly do swear to help Darkus Cuttle in his mission to fight his father and save the Beatles. And Darkus did the same. I, Darkus Cuttle, solemnly do swear that I will not rest until I found my dad and the Beatles are safe. Baxter zoomed down and landed on the back of Darkus's hand. They looked at each other and then at the rhinoceros beetle. There, Virginia said, we've made an oath. Now it's got to happen.